world are concerned about TikTok's links to China and the possibility that Beijing could pressure the Chinese company, which owns the app, to hand over the personal information of users. Now, here is what the British government told lawmakers. We are also going to ban the use of TikTok on government devices. We will do so with immediate effect. Mr. Speaker, this is a precautionary move. We know that there is already limited use of TikTok across government, but it is also good cyber hygiene. A ballista government's banning TikTok is getting longer by the day. The US, Canada, and the European Union have all imposed similar precautionary measures. Now, Beijing is slamming the US after the Biden administration threatened to ban TikTok nationwide unless the Chinese owners of the app sell their shares. Now, China's foreign ministry criticized the apparent ultimatum from Washington. Take a listen. We have always maintained that data security issues should not be used as a tool for some countries to overstretch the concept of national security, abuse state power, and unjustifiably suppress other countries' enterprises. The U.S. has so far failed to produce evidence that TikTok threatens U.S. national security. The U.S. side should stop spreading false information on data security issues, stop unreasonably suppressing this company, and provide an open, fair, just, and non-discriminatory business environment for foreign companies to invest and operate in the U.S. And joining me now is Eric Noonan, a cybersecurity expert and the CEO of CyberSheath. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, I think a core question in all this is a question that I know has been top of mind for you. The UK has banned TikTok from government mobile devices. New Zealand will also ban the app from its parliament. This follows similar bans as we just laid out from the US federal government, the European Commission. If all these entities are banning TikTok on government devices, why not put a ban on all devices? It's an excellent question, Christy. It really is because we've kind of taken care of half of the equation. But as you rightly point out, the other half of the equation is if TikTok's still on these government employees around the world, personally owned devices, the threat still exists. The challenge fundamentally, I think, has to do with the legal frameworks, particularly in democratic countries, to be able to uh, create the conditions where they can put an enforceable ban that will hold up legally on personally owned devices. Now, I think that we're at the early stages of the regulatory frameworks to come into place to allow that kind of thing and make it a condition of employment. Uh, but that kind of infrastructure has to catch up. But certainly this is a, a first step, I think, with this global ban uh, across government devices, which is now it's really soon to become, it appears, a global ban. Got it. So we're seeing these government bans first because they're enforceable. But ban or no ban, what are these security risks associated with TikTok? I think fundamentally, TikTok should be viewed as a global intelligence network. And these aren't, and, and it's a, it has the ability, and it's on millions and millions and millions of devices across the world, and it has the ability of, of being a forward deployed intelligence network to collect information. And this isn't a theoretical threat, right? So, so I think sometimes when the, the threat, uh, maybe several years ago when all the energy started around uh, the threat that is TikTok, it was less understood what could actually happen, but we actually have evidence now, right? And so we've seen um, the chief of TikTok's internal audit uh, who reported back to a, a, his boss was in Beijing targeting journalists from Forbes, it's been widely reported, uh, and the company has acknowledged they did that, and we're tracking locations of, of journalists. So we've we've seen when this threat is weaponized, and that's just one public example. Mm -hmm. So if you think of that at scale, and your last story mentioned propaganda and manipulating public opinion, you think about that the opportunity to kind of track location of journalists or other uh, officials of governments around the world, and then manipulate mass opinion. Uh, it's a very, very uh, potent tool in, in, the, uh, in the tool belt of a, of a global adversary. You say TikTok is much more than a social media platform. It is a potent tool. And in the U.S., ByteDance, the owner of the app, is fighting hard to avoid this forced sale, it's spending a lot of money on U.S. federal lobbyists. So why is that? Why is ByteDance fighting hard all in on maintaining access to the U.S. market? Your thoughts on that? 
Well, uh, they have fought very hard and they've spent a tremendous amount of money on, on lobbyists to do that here in the U.S. And so fundamentally, certainly you might think there's this is a very lucrative market from a business perspective, but it's so much more than that. And so if you think of, a, of the ability of a, a foreign government to have a foothold on every personally owned device in, in the United States and then have the ability to collect intelligence in real time, collect location in real time, unfettered, uh, it's, it's an unparalleled, I think, uh, intelligence tool and forward deployed intelligence network. I don't think we've, we've really ever seen anything like that before. And so uh, that's something that I, I believe China wants to protect. Cybersecurity expert Eric Noonan calling TikTok a global intelligence network. We thank you for your insight. We thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. Take